We are in chapter 2, Scientific Methods. Biological psychology is a branch of science. It's a science. And we're going to use the scientific method to study uh, the biological psychology. So in this chapter, we're going to look at those uh, methods we use in the biological psychology. And to answer those biological psychology questions, the scientists, call them scientists, yes, and they create a hypothesis. And after they create a hypothesis, they need to have a testable prediction and to do the experiment if we want to establish the causation effect. The example I use, I talk about this in previous chapter. Your hypothesis, okay, if, you th if your hypothesis is the, the kids who do not spend enough time with the moms during development, when they turn out, they have a higher chance of the uh, mental disease. That's your hypothesis. Then you can do the experiment with uh, animals and usually use rodents use rodents because they're quicker. I explained the 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 rat every the pregnancy their their menstrual cycle is four days. It's four days. So every four days they ovulate. And after uh, they're pregnant it takes them about sixteen days to produce a liter. A liter have ten to fourteen pups. And after that the rat can immediately get pregnant. Have another liter. And these pups take about two months to mature. And actually, if if they go quicker, they can about forty days. They are sexually uh, reproductive. So if you find a, a rodent, they after one year they produce a lot, very quick cycle. And if you want to study development, well, they will be quick, right? If you are a graduate student, you want to finish your thesis in two years, you're gonna use this. You don't want to use human. Wait forever. Uh, if your hypothesis is the pups who do not spend enough time with the mom are uh, going to have a higher chance of of mental disease, okay, then that's your hypothesis. So how do you do the experiment? You're going to take seven, every day in the morning, you go to the lab, you're going to take seven pups out and put them into the empty cage. And you do your daily activity, you study, and at 5 p.m. before you leave, okay, you put them back so they can they can have food with the mom. And you keep doing that for two months. And actually they they went about thirty five days. So they don't have to they don't need their mom anymore after about one month. And when it turned out, okay, you do those uh experiments I show you in previous chapter, those anxiolytic tests, uh those depression tests and identify, okay, do those pups, they spend limited time with the mom during development, uh, they have higher chance of depression and anxiety. And you may find something that support your hypothesis. And you say, okay, I'm confident about my hypothesis. Or you may find the update, who knows? Or you can find something against your hypothesis. And that's how you do the experiment. And especially you want to do the establish the causation effect, you have to do the experiment to establish causation. And in previous chapter, well, we talk about uh, correlational study. Correlational study is just a correlation. So it can, it can create a mistake uh, if you want to say the causation conclusion. You should not say a causation conclusion. Excuse me. You should not use the causation conclusion by looking at the correlational study. And in the science, we talk about Mozart effect. Your data need to be, be able to be replicated by the other scientists. If not, there's a Mozart effect. You only have the ones. And this is actually a pretty famous uh, event happening in the science field. Uh, it's a Japanese group. I remember about 10 years ago, I listened to NPR, they talk about this. And they talk about this for, for a few days. It's very rare you have uh, events that keep talking about it. Okay, this group is a Japanese group. Uh, this lady, she was in her 30s. Uh, 
she studies stem cell and embryonic stem cell. And embryonic stem cells research is pretty, pretty, was pretty hard t about 10 years ago uh, because those embryonic stem cells, they come from the embryo. So the embryo start from the fertilized in the fallopian tube and it will go to the uterus and have implantation and develop, it take about seven days. And when they go to the uterus, you have about 200 cells. And these cells call called embryonic stem cells. And why these cells are so powerful? Because they have the ability to, to develop into any kind of cell. So they have a lot of potential. But if you believe life happens in fertilization, to take the embryonic stem cell, you have to kill the embryo. That's why it's so uh, ethically controversial to do the embryonic stem cell research. And this group, they claim they are able to turn the skin stem cell. So every organs have their own stem cell. Like you have the skin stem cell, they can develop into the skin cells, different kinds of skin cells, like the uh, epithelium tissues on your skin or those uh, those uh, pigment cells, but they can only develop into the skin cell. So we call them skin stem cells. They are able to turn the skin stem cell back into embryonic stem cell. And this is huge finding because you don't have to kill embryo anymore. And that's pretty, pretty excited in the science field. And NPR talked about this for a few days. And they even claimed this lady, she was in her 30. One day she would receive Nobel Prize. But, most other fact, after a few months, the other group, so there, there, there's not just one uh, science lab study the stem cell. And they found, based on what she said in her, in her paper, they do the experiment, they could not replicate her result. And at first, she claims, well, no, it's, it's because I'm, I'm better than you, right? I can do a better result. But people keep criticizing her. They just could not replicate her result. So eventually, she apologized. She said she, she make up some data, and she deeply regretted it. And also, that's her men mentor. Uh, he committed suicide. And because when you... Uh, When something happened to you and their people will start to dig into your private life, they, they found they actually have an affair. That's why it commits suicide. And so that's a monotonous effect. And it turned out uh, that in the science, your data need to be able to uh, be replicated by the others. If not, we call the monotonous effect. And to study the scientific uh, research, you need to have a theory. So theory is a comprehensive explanation of events, like you predict something going to happen, and that's a theory. Then you need to have a sample. You need to have a sample. So in the questionnaire study, and you want to give your questionnaire to, you won't be able to give it to the whole world population. So you have to create a sample. And that's the population sample. And this one experiment, uh, they say the girls dress in red looks more attractive. So girls, you can, you can go to the party, you can dress in red color. And that's a psychological study. They, they just use the Photoshop to, to change the shirt uh, color. And they'll give it a uh, give the experiment, give the picture to, to, the, to the male, of course, and ask them, okay, well, how attractive this girl look like and compare with this one. They'll give the one to five points, they say, okay, three and four, and turn out they find significant difference. So they, they, this experiment, they said the girl dressed in red uh, looks more attractive. And apparently you, you could not sample the whole male in the whole world. So, you, you can only sample a small population, and that's your sample. That's your sample. And this sample, well, this sample, actually, they, in psychology, they talk a lot of the sample because you can get a, they call it a biased result by uh, having a 
a BIOS the sample. So they have different kind of sample. Uh, you can have a conventional sample. Uh, convenient, sorry, convenient sample. <laughs> convenient sample is, uh, say you are in college, okay, and well, you want to do the questionnaire, and probably you will just go to your campus and see who is nice and give them a questionnaire. And this is con convenient sample. But we want to have a representative sample. Like in the previous study, if your conclusion, you want to say, okay, all uh, male believe the female dressed in red look more attractive. And your sample should not focus on 20 years old young male. You need to co cover all the age from 20 to 60 and all the uh, race, ethnic, or if you want to extend your conclusion to female as well, gender. And that's the representative sample. And to do it, usually we use the random sample. Like this class, we have 30 students, okay? I just randomly pick 10 of them to do the experiment. And that's the random sample. And especially in human study, we want to avoid bias, and we want to avoid placebo effects. Sometimes they, they do, do not do it on purpose, we call the placebo effect. Placebo is, I give you something, and if you believe it works, it really works, that's placebo effect. Say your, your back hurt, and I give you the jelly bean, and I won't tell you it's a jelly bean. I'll say this is a magic pill, and I'll sell you each one for five dollars. And because I'm a professor, you believe me, or okay, you you buy it and you take it, and you say, "Well, I really feel I'm getting better." And you're not faking it; you really feel you're getting better. But this medicine have no effect because it's jelly bean, and this reason is because of placebo effect. How it happens? Because it affects your brain, so you gradually know. Okay, everything happens in your brain. And if we directly affect your brain, we can affect your perception. And that's why the placebo effect work. And sometimes the, the effect is huge. And that's why in the uh, psychology study or the pharmaceutical company, they want to test a new medicine. They have to use the blind, they have to use a blind test to avoid placebo effect. And there are a lot of studies about placebo. They will say, okay, they find the, the vivid color one works better than the than the white one. So the red one will always work better. You take the red jelly bean, you feel better than you take the white jelly bean. And also the more expensive one works better than the cheaper one. So if I sell you those jelly beans, I sell you each one for five cents, you will say, it's a, it's a piece of junk, it won't work, and it really won't work. And if I sell you each one for five dollars, you say, that's expensive, it's gonna work, and it really work. Because your brain believe. So there are a lot of study about the placebo. And they will do the blind experiment. They can do the single blind, the double blind. The single blind is the experimenter know which group they're gonna receive the real, which group gonna receive the, the placebo. And they won't tell the subject the single blind. Double blind is the experimenter and the subject both are blind. So like you, uh, you hire someone to do the exper experiment for you, experimenter. And those exper experimenter don't know which group are gonna have the real or the placebo. And this is called the double blind. And and they need to do the double blind because sometimes the experimenter unintentionally uh, show something to make the subject know they're gonna receive this or this because human face is very complicated. So it turned out uh, in psychology study, especially in human, they have to do the double blind experiment. Okay, let's take a break.